Hey guys, this is Matt with 4hydroponics.com and today we're going to be talking about the dreaded powdery mildew. So first we're going to talk about the fact that fungicides by definition are not curative. Um, they are something that treats the disease's fruiting body and reproductive body which keeps it contained and keeps it from spreading to different parts of your garden. So a lot of people are under the assumption that some fungicide out there is actually going to cure powdery mildew. Um, that's just not the way that fungicides actually work. Powdery mildew is a disease first and foremost, so that would mean that the fungicide would have to get into the plant to cure the disease, which is not what they do. Um, they basically hang out on the leaf tissue and make the leaf surface um, undesirable for mold. We'll talk about a couple different products, but keep that in mind that um, when you have powdery mildew already popping up in your garden, it's usually a little bit too late. You might be able to save a plant in a different room that doesn't have it yet from getting it by containing it, but if the plants already have it, it's in the plant and most likely your best bet is to cut your losses, cut the plants down and move on to next ones. If they're outdoor plants and they're uh, especially vegetable plants seem to be relatively resilient to it and if you continue with the spray regimen throughout the season, you can still harvest some good plants. If you don't contain it or spray it on outdoor vegetables, it'll really decrease your yields and it'll really decrease your plant's overall productivity. So um, keep that in mind that it's worth treating the plants especially if they're outdoor uh, on a regular basis and that'll kind of keep your plants fighting it all the time through the summer and you can still pull some pretty good yields. Um, some of the products we'll look at today are either leaf washes or actual fungicides so they do a couple different things. First one up is the PM wash. This is basically going to rinse the powder mold off of your leaf. Um, water does a very good job. This is basically a frequency water or a, a water that's definitely charged up to help take any kind of mold down off your leaves. In general, water is a great way to keep mold contained, but because high humidity is something that we're fighting with uh, mold environments, you wanna make sure that if you're using water to rinse your plants down in the morning or something to get that mold off, that you have uh, ample sunlight and or good circulation in your garden to keep your plants or get your plants dried out fast enough to where you're not actually gonna make another environment for mold to grow. Next up is the neem oil. This has been around forever. Um, this is, uh, a great way to contain it, especially preventatively on outdoor plants and indoor plants. Uh, if you use it too strong, you could see some negative effects, so make sure you use the proper dosages. Um, this oil is going to coat the plant and it's going to make it uh, inhospitable for the actual fruiting body to pop up. Um, and if there's actual mold on there, it'll suffocate it and contain it and make it uh, unable to spread any further in the uh, any kind of air current or any kind of uh, any kind of blowing uh, circulation fans or anything that would basically trap it, um, which is what you're really trying to do is contain it. Um, next up, these two products are bacterial in nature. Um, so this is a uh, going to be a Streptomyces bacteria, and this is a Bacillus uh, bacteria. These both basically digest mold and once again get on the leaf surface, coating it with the bacterial culture and making it so that mold does not want to grow and can't grow uh, very productively on the leaf surface, containing it and keeping it from moving around from plant to plant. Um, the actinovate is cool because it can be watered into your plant, getting it into your, getting that bacterial culture into your soil. Uh, so the plant seems to be able to get more resilient to it, the better of a culture you have on the plant in general. So spraying this as well as feeding it seems to be a really good way uh, to keep your plant, you know, really uh, pushing that powdery mold off and keeping it away from your plants. The Serenade is Omri listed organic, so if you're looking for something that is organic, there's a couple products in the market. This does have a funk to it, has a smell to it, so keep that in mind, especially if you're using it inside. But once again, this is a bacteria um, that's gonna basically kill the mold through eating it and through making the leaf surface uh, someplace that the mold just can't thrive. So next up is the Green Cure. Uh, green Cure is potassium bicarbonate. That is going to raise the pH of the leaf surface to a level where mold's not gonna be able to grow and it's not gonna be able to reproduce. It's very similar to baking soda and water. That's an old uh, kind of you know, house trick. So uh, that's something that you're into. This would be a great way to not have to do the at-home remedy, but use an Omri listed organic version or something like that that's gonna do the same kind of thing. Um, it's a great product. In veg, I would recommend it full strength, and in flower, you wanna watch out. A full strength can be a little strong on the pistols and have some uh, development on your flowers. It could have some negative development on your flowers. Serenade also is known for being a little strong, so maybe use it in a little lower doses on flowering plants versus vegging plants. Um, and then last but not least over here, we have the mildew cure. Mildew cure is cottonseed oil, garlic, and clove oil. And once again, that oil is going to coat the plants, basically contain the powder mold, and make it so that mold's gonna have a really hard time coming back. Um, once any of these products wear off, which they all inevitably do, um, the bacteria is nice because you can continuously add it to try to keep that culture there all the time. But any of these washes and fungicides eventually do wear off, and those symptoms do come back. 
So you'd be prepared to use these on a regular basis throughout the season um, to get all the way to the end. Um, also keep in mind that things that cause powder mill, powdery mildew to pop up are things like Stagnant air temperature, high humidity, dry soils, uh, shadier areas it seems to come harder in late season. So keep your eye out for it. Using any of these as a preventative is a great way to go. Uh, if you don't see it, it doesn't mean that it's not going to come on later. So maybe starting before you see it could be a great way to really never have to deal with it. And if you have uh, a garden that's really tight, make sure you keep it weeded. And if you have large plants, make sure you keep some air circulation in the space, especially if it's indoor, have a lot of air circulation, um, no dead spots in your room. So if you do have the problem already, this is a great way to treat the actual symptoms. And this is another way to treat the room plus the symptoms. Uh, you can use sulfur up until a couple weeks of flowering. Uh, mostly uh, using veg is the best way to do it. Uh, this little sulfur vaporizer has a small dish in it. We're going to fill that up with our sulfur prill. We're going to burn it in the dark cycle with no fans, no filters, no exhaust on. The room's going to be sealed up. Uh, make sure you follow the protocols on how to use this stuff properly because sulfur vaporizer, sul a vaporized sulfur is not good for you to breathe in. So we want to make sure our room's sealed up, our exhaust fans, everything's shut off. We're going to burn this for two to four hours depending on the size of the room and how bad the problem is. Uh, and that's going to throw a very thin vaporized sulfur dust over everything, your room, your gear, your plants, and that's going to basically kill your mold, uh, your symptoms of your mold, and also sterilize your room, which is why it's a really nice alternative. If you have an uh, area that you're trying to sterilize without plants in it and you're worried about there being mold, you've been going outside a lot, coming inside with your shoes on and stuff, and you want to make sure it's clean before you get plants in there, I would recommend an ozone generator. The sulfur burners do have some odor, and you do have to follow a couple different you know, rules um, and have your, your room set up to use it properly. The ozone generators, we have a video on our YouTube channel on that. Check that out. There's a great way to sterilize an environment, and especially if you don't have any plants in there. You can get it at really high levels um, without you in there to kill off everything before you get back in there. Um, so I hope this video helped you out, explain some of the do's and don'ts of the powder mold. Environment is a big part, you know, uh, what kind of plants can be more susceptible, so keep that in mind when you're planting. And plant things in the shade that are less susceptible, plant things that do have that problem, so place you can keep an eye on them and maybe be more preventative with those kind of strains or genetics um, or varieties of plant. Um, all this stuff's available on our website and a whole lot more. Uh, hope this video helped you out. Come check us out and we'll see you next time.